Now, in terms of running a journal, um, uh, again, I hope I don't leave out anything. I'll ask Manasse to maybe come in if I leave out anything. But in terms of running a journal, the very first thing you start with, because you are saying that you want to set it up on the user journal platform so that it's on the list of these other journals, there are quite a number of them. Um, you will, obviously there's a name. I don't know if there's an abbreviation, a short name. There's already an ISSN number. All these things will be configured in the, in the system. So CICT through Mr. Mwansa, Manasse, we will set up the journal for you. Um, there will be requirements like, uh, I mean, I can log in to showcase uh, uh, some of the things that will be required of you just now so that you have an idea. And I'll use JLSS. Um, so you notice when one logs, logs onto the system that under settings and uh, maybe journal, I guess it is, um, you set up these things here, right? So the journal name, the the short name for the journal, tagged as journal initials, you know, who publishes it, the ISSN number, uh, you know, a bit of information about the journal. Essentially, just the, the basic information, which probably is already on one of the hard copies of your issues, maybe the most recent uh, printout of the issues. Perhaps information that may be outdated is the composition of the editorial team. Uh, but what you notice is that, uh, again, the recommendation is that uh, you you also set up details of uh, so I've logged on there, but I'll, I'll I'll also sign in whilst not logged on so that you see the information I'm talking about. I'll go to the same journal, which is the Journal of Law and Social Sciences, and I'll go to maybe the about and then editorial team, right? So you want to set up information like this. So Manasse obviously, um, I know Manasse normally handles administration. I am more than happy to help with uh, adding this information with you. In fact, what would be better is um, usually teams are configured in such a way that uh, uh, team members, editorial team members have different strengths. So amongst you, maybe there are people that are very enthusiastic about this IT stuff. Um, if that's the case, we can work alongside them so that they know how to do these things in the event that maybe they at some stage they want to change uh, or they want to add another, you know, uh, editorial team member, then just log in and make that change. Um, okay. Um, there's also basic information like uh, details about the journal, right? House styles. You know, uh, is there a template that you're following, for instance? Uh, is there a specific referencing or citation style that you follow, right? Um, what sort of information should the authors provide do you require that they provide emails for all the authors and ORCID numbers and all those things? Uh, all of this information will be configured and there'll be there's a dedicated page. So if you notice where I'm at here, this is all for JLSS, one of the journals on the Unza Journal platform. This has uh, contact information, whom exactly authors or whoever is interested would want to contact in the event that they have a question, right? Uh, information about the journal, submission guidelines, how do they submit? Because you are going online, there'll be maybe an explicit statement to say you must first of all register an account and then you log in and you submit and this is a checklist or something. So all of these things you're seeing here, this would be like on the user side, these things are configured in the journal itself. Uh, so so Manasa would obviously, or CICT, let's use CICT, would request that you provide this information if you want, maybe a dedicated session could be held where maybe this is done whilst everybody else is present and credentials will be created for you with appropriate permission. So, for instance, in my case, I do not have access to all the journals on this platform. I don't uh, because these are different journals, right? I only have access, I think, to three of them. So the same would be for the nursing journal. You will give appropriate permissions or roles to specific members of your editorial team. But of course, CICT has super user access. So it'll be this information that is shared. Um, what else is there? Uh, I think this is just about it in terms of the information. Of course, uh, Mr. Mwansa will ask for details on which users you'd want created on the platform so that they can already be given access. Now, once that is done, uh, once you supply you know, cover pages and, and, and all the requisite information, then the real work begins, right? Because you will then announce, part of the announcement will appear right here, right? Or maybe you have a mailing list already. Maybe through your connections, you say, 
our journal has now gone online and submissions are submitted uh, using the online journal platform. And you send the URL. So users will go to the URL. If they don't have an account, they register and then they log in and they submit the article. The way the workflow works, right, is it's, um, it's, it's an interesting system. And I think most systems actually work in, in this way, I want you to think, right? Um, I'm wondering if I can use, uh, because I can use something that hasn't yet been assigned, perhaps this, although it's a real submission, I'll just say view submission. Uh, the, the entire workflow starts with the user. If I'm, if I'm an author, a potential author who wants to submit an article in the Journal of Law and Social Sciences, I'll come to the journal, right? Um, and then if I don't have an account, I'll register, obviously. If I have an account, I will log in. When I log in, because I'll register as an author, right? You can register as a reviewer, as an author. If I register as an author because I'm interested in submitting a manuscript, um, that article once submitted will automatically be in what's called the submission workflow. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm spending a bit of time here because, you know, there are challenges that we're experiencing in some of these journals I'm, I'm, I'm affiliated with, like JLSS, right? This is a lot of work. Because when, it, when an article comes in, usually there's some sort of desk review that needs to take place. So somebody in the editorial team will probably be tasked with you know, the role of trying to do a sanity check before you assign reviewers. Is, is this submission really in line with the focus of the journal? Because somebody like Lighton will submit something that has nothing to do with nursing, perhaps, right? <laughs> because he wants to be promoted. Obvious, that should be a desk re a rejection because if it has nothing to do with nursing, it shouldn't even be assigned to reviewers. You'll be wasting people's time. But also, as part of the desk review process, this is when the, the I want to call him the journal editor or the section editor, will determine to say, I think the most likely reviewers for this article are these people. If you already have a reviewer database. If you don't, again, I'll talk about this in stage number two, there's, uh, there's, the system has a provision where you can build a reviewer database with, with tags of their specializations because nursing, like other disciplines, obviously has sub-specializations, right? Um, and so you'd want a more targeted approach where you are, you're actually inviting the appropriate reviewers to review the work. But, but the desk review would also involve things like how these people... Uh, conform to the house rules. Maybe you have a limit to say all submissions must not exceed maybe 20 pages or 10 pages. If somebody has submitted something like 50 pages, very common with our students, <laughs> they think just because you've published your dissertation, you can just submit that dissertation as, as a paper. That's a desk reject, right? Or depending on, I don't know what sort of uh, review process you use, if it's double blind where the reviewers must not know the author and the author must not know the reviewer, then the person who's doing the desk review must check that the submission, the PDF document that has been submitted does not have any personal identifying information, for instance. Um, and the usual stuff that you check for anyway. So this is done as part of submission. Again, you would obviously need people, right, assigned to, to oversee that process. In some instances, maybe the chief editor would do this. I don't know but it could be quite a bit of work here. Maybe what might be ideal is, uh, and I've tried myself to advise my colleagues on JLS, J JLSS, Jonas, and Jabs to say, we need a system in place where you're assigning roles, not just hoping that somebody is going to attend to this. So amongst yourselves, you could just designate people, maybe uh, for redundancy's sake, maybe two people to oversee the desk review process. Um, and then at this stage is when you assign, um, I want to call him, is it a journal editor, if you will? So if the chief editor is the one who's doing this, you need to assign an actual editor, the person who's going to see that article through until the last stage, because this would be the person who would be tasked to find the reviewers. This is the person who would be tasked to follow up on reviews. This would be a person who would be communicating with the author, because at this stage, if you notice something wrong, this system, and there could be training organized by CSC at a later stage, details will be provided, but the system has a mechanism to enable you to 
communicate with the author. Oh, you've missed out this information. Can you please resubmit because you did this wrong or something? When you're comfortable with that stage, what you do is you go, you, you, you assign an edit and then you move on to the review stage. And I so wish I could, uh, maybe let me pull an article that has already undergone all of these stages. Uh, maybe something that has been published, the editorial for um, the issue that was published just yesterday for JLSS. So it's submission, right? At submission, you notice that there's usually a number of options, right? In some instances, you, uh, the person who's doing the desk review, if it's a chief editor, will make a decision to say, this does not need to, un it doesn't need to be peer reviewed. Like an editorial or an obituary, uh, I'm told uh, the Journal of Preventive Health Medicine here is about to, I was talking to uh, Bridget, Dr. Uh, well, Bridget anyway, um, to, to say are there thoughts on uh, submitting an, an obituary for Brian, right? Uh, because of the role he played with the journal. In that case, if it's an obituary, it doesn't have to be peer reviewed, right? No review required, so you send it direct to copy editing or something. Or at this stage, if, if it's a desk re reject, like it's not in line with the journal, you just decline the submission. But the normal uh, sequence of events is you say, uh, you, you say send to review. When you send it to review, and I hope there's a, uh, I can't find um, uh, a very nice article that has what I want. Uh, pardon me. Let me just look for maybe, I, I guess, jobs or something might have these things here. And I hope Dr. Professor Mumba will, will uh, uh, give me here. This may be confidential, maybe not. So if from submission, you go to review stage. You, you notice that at review stage, what you're doing here is you are assigning edit uh, reviewers. So people that are going to read through the article and make a decision on whether it's worth publishing or if there are major revisions to be made. Um, again, when setting up, maybe there's a reviewer form that you already have access. This can actually be configured in the system. Uh, again, during training, this can be explained, I think. In some instances, there could be several rounds of reviews, right? Maybe in the first round, the number of issues that are raised and you move on to second round, or even third round. After the review, uh, by the way, the review has an, an option where you are sending reminders, right? This review, I mean, this review has, is, is still pending. You haven't um, responded. Can you please submit your review? Again, you need to assign somebody to run with this because it's a lot of work. Typically, you'd configure a, a review um, as part of the journal configuration stage. Uh, I wish I could showcase that, which I think I can actually. Um, you, there, there are configurations that you make within your journal to say, a review is, is uh, you, you give reviewers, let's say, maybe a month to send through the reviews. After a month, if they don't, then you either uh, reassign somebody else or, I, I don't know, you can extend it or something. Um, so uh, maybe this will make sense if I showcase a specific example. It's under settings, and I believe it's under the workflow, I think it is. Um, under review, you notice here. Uh, so you give... When you send a review, because a, a request for a review is done using the system. So they'll receive an email to say, we, we feel you're a perfect fit for this article that has been submitted. Can you please uh, respond to us within a week on whether you accept to be a reviewer or not? You're giving them one week in this particular configuration for JLSS. And then you tell them once they accept to say, after you accept, you have an additional four weeks to complete the review. Of course, you can you know extend the review and all those things, right? Um, the reviewer forms I was talking about uh, here, by the way. This is uh, a classic example of the reviewer form that is used by JLSS. So the reviewers will actually use the system to to provide this information. Significant, it's a significant so generator of the article. They fill in this like it scale um, option. Anyways, um, so again you need a dedicated resource to run with this. And remember that, I don't know how often you publish, but if you publish quarterly or twice a year, for instance, if it's quarterly, you're looking at whoever is tasked to do this, the people tasked to do this would be doing this uh, maybe every quarter, right? 
It can be a bit of work, especially if you have a lot of submissions, which I imagine is the case, a number of nursing uh, programs offered by a number of universities. So I'm sure there are people doing interesting research in that space. Um, so people are located here. Once you, you are done with this stage, right, you can either decline the submission based on the review. So if all the reviewers say this is an outright reject, then obviously decline the, the submission. If it's a go ahead, they say, well, this is a good article, then you accept it as a submission. Uh, if they, the author needs to make revisions, you request the author to make revisions. Um, once you accept the submission, it moves to the third stage, which is a copy editing stage. This is a part where Unza Press comes in. Because the copy editing is the part where you are trying to create an aesthetically pleasing you know, um, a manuscript, something that conforms to your house rules, you know, typographical errors and grammars are hopefully checked. checked. I, I don't know if Unza Press does this, but again, maybe your editorial team has this capacity. It can be a lot of work to copy edit, um, to copy edit right? Checking for grammatical errors, you know, things that are to do with nesting that have been done in an, an unorthodox manner would need to be corrected here. So copy editing. Usually for JLSS and Jonas and Jobs, copy editing means just telling user press, these are the things we want published. Can you properly uh, format these and send them to us? That's copy editing. Once you are done with the copy editing, you move on to the next stage, which is production. Now at this stage, you actually publish the issue, right? Um, and then it goes online. When it goes online, it will appear... Uh, you specify is it the volume and the issue number and it would appear if you look at JLSS these are the different volumes and issues that have been published the most recent one is volume 6 issue number 1 there's a bit of the backlog which is why it's tagged as uh, it's for 2022 but the publication year is still 2024 this was published last uh, yesterday actually yeah so 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 in essence this is it um the the publishing uh, all you need is uh, capacity building. Again, if amongst your editorial team you identify or you assign roles to yourselves, um, the person who's tasked to publish can be responsible for doing this. And as part of training, they'll be oriented on how to do this. Um, I, I think in a nutshell, in terms of the workflow, hopefully this gives you an idea of what is involved in terms of um, publishing. But there's one small little thing um, seeing as you're saying you're going to want to have this set up on the UNSA platform, the issue of DOIs, the, DO, the, the articles have to be deposited, the DOIs have to be registered, because when you publish it and you tie the DOI to the articles, these will not automatically resolve. They need to be deposited. Uh, so UNSA has... Um, UNSA has... Uh, Unza has a subscription with Crossref, so our DOIs are managed by Crossref. So we use this interface to deposit. So for each article, you go through this growing process where you you deposit the article. So if you have seven articles in um, in the uh, uh, is it in the uh, in the issue that you are publishing, for each of those articles, you are entering these details. It's like you are creating a mapping. Really, it's time consuming. I, I mean. I don't complain myself. I've been tasked to do this as part of JLSS. But if you speak to other journals like Professor Mumba and Professor Siaminwe for journals, they'll tell you that this can be a painful process. And in fact, so painful that sometimes some of our colleagues have actually not registered these DOIs and they won't resolve. Um, I hope we can use, uh, sorry, but maybe we can use Jonas as a bad example uh, because I know they've had... Uh, uh, this problem here. I don't know if they've registered this. Maybe they have. Um, I think they have. This is an odd. They have. This is going to resolve. Yeah, you may not see this. Yeah, it's resolving. So they have. But but there are, there are these challenges. So um, I think in a nutshell, um, that's what I thought would be useful in terms of um, in terms of giving you an idea of what it would take to go online. But if, if, if these things appear to be strange and new, uh, even I was new to this, um, this is why you have CICT. A lot of people who, who sometimes speak ill of CICT, but these colleagues of ours do a tremendous work. Um, so thank you very much. I hope this was useful in terms of the 
uh, the workflow. I don't know if there are any thoughts about this. 